What happens when you mix a jet ski, canoe, and an airplane? You get this. It's the Aventura UL Ultralight. It's got the engine from a snowmobile, and it's got the rest of it is kind of an airplane. Made by Aero Adventure. My favorite part of the entire airplane is the wheels. It's got a little lever, and with like the lawnmower wheels, you just lift it up and they go whoop like that. And then you just put the lever down and whoop, and then you can land on land. I found this one on Barnstormers for right at our max price of $10,000. And I did learn that the kit price for this, you're looking at about 25,000 bucks. So that's a pretty good deal right there. This one has the high horsepower version of 40 horsepers or the downing 55 miles an hour. That's right. Takeoff roll of a massive, make sure you got a really big runway for this one, 150 feet. That, that's 50 yards. That is awesome. And on the water, you only need 200 feet. So a big pond, you're good to go. It's got a useful load of me. The service ceiling on this is 13,500 feet. Now, I don't know about you, but I don't know if I want to be going 13,000 feet in the air in a canoe. One time out of the farm, I rode a canoe down a hill into a pond. True story. Thought I was going to die. That is the dumbest thing I've ever seen a dummy do. Wow. So it's basically a kite strapped to your kid's tricycle with a weed eater engine on the back. It's got redneck written all over it. What's even more crazy is you don't even need a license or medical. You don't have to go through all these books and study and fly forever. You can just buy it and fly it. Before you fly it, a word from our safety sponsor. Any activity involving aviation should include a some level of training. You need to know the rules and the regulations around airspace, your own capabilities, and good decision making. Now we're back. So what exactly qualifies as an ultralight? Well, to answer that question, I called a good friend of mine. You'll know him, you love him. It's Pastor Jim. Thank you, Jimmy, for that introduction. Turn with me to the book of Far, chapter 103, starting in verse 1. And it says, if it weighs less than 254 pounds, that's like a nice size woman, ha <laughs> ha! and has a fuel capacity not to exceed five U.S. gallons, just enough for a good baptism, and is not capable of more than 55 knots of calibrated air speed. You can't get too fast now. You're going to outrun your safety. Now remember, people, this is low and slow like a good barbecue. We're not talking in a 200-knot Satan wagon. No, no. We want it down low. <laughs> Turn your ears up if you've got your marker highlight this. Notwithstanding any other section pertaining to airman certification, this is your training. Now listen up. Operators, or you, pilot, of ultralight vehicles are not, listen now me, not required to meet any aeronautical knowledge age, so even you youngsters can get in on it, or experience requirements to operate those vehicles or to have have an airman or medical certificate so you don't need nothing you just hop in this thing pull that cord and go flying glory hallelujah to freedom last part stick with me now I'm gonna land this plane okay all right this is not required to be registered or to bear markings of any type you do not have to have the mark of the beast you are free glory hallelujah can I get a clue prop Got it, nailed it, let's go find one. Next on the list we have the Falcon. Built by Romo, Romal, Jurlik, 
In the U.S., Larry Newman, I can pronounce his name, from American Aerolites, the Falcon was born. And this holds the altitude record, sit down, 26,900 feet in a, in a bat wing. That is insane. Coming in at a whopping 28 hers purrs, it'll cruise at a modest 55 miles an hour. Takeoff distance, 150 feet. You need less than 100 to land it and, you know, be able to fly it again. The empty weight is right on that limit of 254 pounds. Or for you Europeans that haven't caught up to us Americans yet, that's 115 kilograms. You see that little thing on the front? That's a canard. And according to the stats, that's 25% of the lift. And the fantastic part about that is when you're going into a stall, which is where you don't have enough speed for the angle that you're at, that front wing will stall before the big back wing, dropping the nose and keeping you safe. So the back wing kind of can never stall unless you're really, really trying on it, like some crazy aerobatics or some stupid thing like that in this. But that, that's a fantastic feature. I dig it. I, I like it. You want to know who else flew this airplane? The first guy to break the sound barrier. Mr. Chuck Yeager, everyone. He just says it's pure, unadulterated fun to fly. Woo! Coming in at number eight at a $6,500 price point is the Max Air Drifter. This is simplicity. And you have all of your control services. You got a rudder in the back, a ailerons on the side, and an elevator in the tail. I mean, that that's it. You're sitting on a flagpole with a weed eater engine strapped to it and a straight wing front and back. That is as simple as it gets. And to make you go a little faster, they put a little piece of uh, plastic in front of you so you cut through the air faster. In 1983 dollars, this thing was $5,500. So if you account for inflation at $6,500 and this one's already put together so you don't have to do all that, boom, inflation never hit this airplane. That, that's amazing. And like most other airplane companies, yep, this one went bankrupt in 1991. And then through a series of handoffs and pass the buck around and kick the can down the road, it eventually ended up down in Australia and then in China and then Queensland back to Australia and all kinds of stuff. It went everywhere. Get your fast stats on this one this particular one has the rotax 377 it's basically a basketball player 252 pounds eight foot four inches tall and a wingspan of 30 feet climbs out at 600 feet a minute which frankly is about the same as a cherokee 140 or a cessna 172 for that matter shoot that's that's pretty good it'll do a positive six negative three g's that's actually pretty good. None of the other airplanes would do that stuff. Not that I'd want to do that in this thing. But, you know, hey, you only live once, man. And if $6,500 is too much, well, we've got one at $6,400. And this one is the Rans Coyote. And it is the closest thing to an actual airplane that I've seen on this entire list. It looks like a normal airplane. However, Mr. Randy Schittlitter. No, that's not right. Schlitter? I think I said that wrong. <laughs> that's funny. If you're out there, I'm sorry, Randy, but that's a funny name. This one is the Rans S5, because it's the three-wheeler. And the construction time on this one is reported at 211 hours. Not too bad. You can find them with floats and skis and anything else you can throw on there. This one right here... It's got the Rotax 503 high horsepower version. 50, baby! 50 ponies under that hood! All right, wait a second. Hold on. This doesn't qualify as an ultralight because it's got a nine-gallon fuel tank, strike one. It goes 95 miles an hour, strike two. Its empty weight is 325 pounds, strike three. And you're out. It is an experimental 
which is different. So you could do the ultralight or the amateur, which is the experimental one. And because of the engine on that one and the weight and the speed, it's not an ultralight. All right, scratch this. It's still, a, well, there you go. It's the cheapest airplane experimental you can buy at 6,400 bucks. That's fantastic. You do need a license for this one though. That, that's a bummer. Well, you snuck in there, you dirty rat. All right, well, let's move on from that last fake coyote in sheep's clothing. Tied for number fifth and sixth on price is Fisher FP101 coming in at an even 5,000 smackers. This one is powered by a Kawasaki. 440. Oh yeah, it's got bush tires, snow skis, tow brakes, blueprints, all kinds of goodies. Also actually looks like a real airplane from the outside, from the side. But if you look at it from the front, it looks like your screen is all squished. This was designed by Michael Fisher in 1982 and hit that max 254 pound empty weight. Also hit that subscribe button. It's basically, it's mostly made of wood. It operates like a normal airplane. You got a stick that controls your ailerons, rudder, and your elevators in the back, which is nice. It, and you have a little fancy door that you can get in and out of. Isn't that cute? Hit you with your basic statistics. 16 foot, six inches long. Your max speed, it's all limited because of the regulation. So all these basically have the same top speed of 63 miles an hour, same cruise speed of 55 miles an hour. This one will climb out at 600 feet a minute. Yeah, kind of, you know, standard for a light aircraft. It's pretty good. Unfortunately, you can't buy this specific kit anymore. However, they make a whole bunch of other kits. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14 kits. And none of them are ultralight, but they are the experimental version. And that's about all I got to say about that. Coming in at fifth place is the gold standard of ultralights. The one, the only, the original Challenger 1. This one is already like 90% put together and most of these are designed to be put together within a few hours. 5,000 bucks will get you in the air. The first Challenger flew back in 1983 and took a great leap. It's one small flight for planes, one giant cruise for plane kind. I got it. We'll edit that out. Wait, that was terrible. And you can still buy the kit today, which is fantastic. A brand new kit in an ultralight category will cost you right about seventeen, eighteen thousand dollars $18,000. They're still making these things today after 30, almost 40 years. Crazy. Most of these challengers fall into the light sport aircraft, which this one that's for sale might because of the engine size. So uh, you gotta be careful with that. Make sure you get the right one that'll that'll be under that ultralight category. So just, just throwing that out there to you. If you're looking at these, just make sure it fits that. You've been warned. Let's keep it rolling. Here is your World War I Fighter Ace Red Baron the Mini Max 1100R. It's the one, the only, the original. And yes, it is an ultralight. This one on Craigslist, $3,950, brings it in as one of the cheapest. And it's got, check this out, a half of a Volkswagen motor at 37 hearse powers. They're selling the entire airplane kit for less than seven grand, which is less than some of these other ones cost used and old and all that stuff. So 10 grand, you could easily have a brand new airplane. Fantastic. Back in 1985, Mr. Wayne Ison had a philosophy. He said, I want an inexpensive, simple to build, ultralight aircraft that's a joy to fly and has outstanding performance that birthed this 1100R. If you've ever wanted that open cockpit feel, 
where you can feel the air blowing through your hair at 55 miles an hour and you don't want to stick your head out of a car window and get bugs and things flying at you, this is how you do it. I would highly recommend wearing a helmet with some visors or your fighter goggles or at least the old cool World War I goggles. That'd be cool. This is definitely a plane to do that in. That's what you need. Coming in at number three is my favorite and what happens in my mind when I imagine an ultralight. It was in the winter in Wisconsin. After a few adult beverages, the conversation went something like this. We got this 340 sled up here uh, and uh, the track broke off of it. Why, well, I, I seen this National Geographic where these uh, kids were jumping off a cliff on uh, with a kite. I think we can take her up a notch, don't you know? We, we can strap that snowmobile motor to the back there and put a fan on it. I got this lawn chair. Uh, it sits in the ice hut all year. We, we, we haven't used that in decades. My accent goes from Irish to American to whatever. But anyways, and then one guy goes to the other, I don't think you'll do it. And the other guy says, oh, I'll take that bet. And he says, here, hold my beer, watch this. And then he comes out of the shed two weeks later and he's uh, bolted his lawn chair to the kite with the snowmobile motor on the back with a, his ceiling fan that he stole from his living room. And that's how this got started. I, I, I absolutely love this. Everything about this screams, what are you thinking? <laughs> Which is my favorite thing in the whole world. And this is where you start getting into that what you picture in your mind as an ultralight which is kind of that mix between a lawn chair and a chainsaw engine and a hang glider that you hold this this one is the step after that the next generation after that where you actually have controls while it still looks kind of like a hang glider with an engine strapped on the back and it kind of looks like a thing an airplane thingy so this is a Sabre 340. It is designed to be cheap. The budget design is a basic aircraft, no cockpit fairing, no windshield, no anything. It's amazing you've got three wheels because two would be too unstable and four, which is way too much. And yeah, that's exactly what they did was take a hang glider and strap a wheelchair to it and throw a snowmobile engine on the back. In this little thing contraption here, you can still manage to get 700 foot per minute climb out of it. That I'm, I am legitimately impressed by the climb rates of these things. I, w I didn't think they'd be anywhere near what they are. This one comes in at a massive 3,950 bucks uh, worth every penny. I mean, that's the most fun per dollar you can have. Or is it? Because this is number three on our list. Number two might be my favorite on the list purely because of its statistics. Check this out. So you fly on Southwest, it's a Boeing 737-800, has a wingspan of 117 feet, five inches. This Quicksilver MX can take off. You can park it on one side of the wing. You can take off, fly over the fuselage and land with 10 feet to spare. It's nuts! You only need 40 feet. That's right, four zero feet to take off. That blows my mind. And to land, you only need 60 feet, and that's only because the brakes can't stop it that fast. This is fantastic. Comes in at number two at a whopping 3,800 bucks. Rate of climb, also love this, 900 feet a minute. That is better than the light, the Cessnas, you know, the 150s, some of the 172s. It was better than uh, the Cherokee 140s. Also, I would love to shout out this fact. It gets way better gas mileage than my car. It gets better gas mileage than my van. It gets 24.4 miles to the gallon. Fantastic. Now, at that, you know, burning that, you're only going 44 miles an hour at 1.8 gallons per hour. That is that is as little sipping as you can get without going to an electric something or another. You can go buy it. A brand new kit will cost you somewhere around 20 grand, give or take, depending on your options and all that stuff. But yeah, you can go out right now and go 
Go pick up a brand new one. I love it. Coming in at number one, cheapest airplane on sale today that I found, 2,500 bucks for a Sunburst Air Mass. Ready to fly, it's got a high performance Kawasaki 440 engine in it. And this one, if you'll notice the tail, it's not a standard tail like this. It's not a V tail like on the Bonanza, is it? It's an inverted V. Those things in the back are rudder vaders, like a Darth Vader. Except windshield, nap. Wheel coverings, nap. Engine, yes. Wing, yes. Cheapest way to get into the sky are the ultralights, and this one is the cheapest of the ultralights. There you go. 2,500 bucks will get you flying. You don't need a license for it. You don't need a medical exam. All you need is a football field length of grass somewhere. Not even that on most of these, half of a football field of grass, a big backyard, and you're, you're ready to go, that's it. And this one is fantastic because it was built so that it could go in a bag and you could put it on top of your car. So if your kid, has a hockey bag laying around, this thing will fit in it. Hey, you just strap it to the top of the car and go down to the park and off you go. I would love to know what cheap airplanes you found or that you know of, and I'm still looking for that next project as usual.